It's time for our next guest. Um, he's from the Netherlands. And uh, he already had contact with the Hapstars in the 60s. And because he was working uh, for uh, record companies and um, many other music industry, he was a person who uh, brought ABBA to the Netherlands in 73 and took care of them on uh, behalf of Polydor. Uh, please welcome Harry Knipsfield. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, Helga did already a little introduction. And uh, I spoke with Harry uh, on the phone. And um, we have a half hour, which is good because otherwise we will be sitting here till 7 o'clock. <laughs> Uh, at least, at least, at least. So uh, I, w I will be back with you, uh, Harry, because we have a lot to talk about. But we are limited in time. Harry, how did you got involved with ABBA? Well, I, wa I was involved in 1968 when I worked for a small record company at that time. I called Iramark in Brussel, in, the, in Holland. And uh, it was a small record company, so we didn't have too much pop repertoire. But then I, I got a, a, a new visitor, he was half Dutch, half uh, Swedish, and he worked for a Swedish record company called Kuppel Records, which distributed a label called Olga. And they had a group, the Hamstars. And uh, he, he, he asked me whether I was interested in releasing records by the Hamstars. And actually, I, they were completely unfamiliar to me, but I gave them half an hour, I said, okay, play your record, see if, uh, if I can do something with it in Holland. And he played me several records, including My Life Guy, There's a Flower in My Garden, but especially a song called Sunny Girl. And uh, I liked the, I liked the episodes. Of course, I had no idea how big they were going to be, but he told me, they were very popular in Sweden, but nobody outside of Sweden was familiar with them. But I liked Sunny Girl and I released it. It was a very interesting deal. I didn't have to pay anything at all. I just had to pay, if I sold one record, I had to pay, say, a quarter, quarter of a guilder, something like that. And I released Sunny Girl. And of course, you always hope that a record will be successful, but this this record became very very popular and became a top five record in the Netherlands, Sunny Girl, in 1968. And uh, the, the piano player in uh, the headset was Benny Anderson, double S, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, he and his friend Björn Ulveen wrote that from Sunny Girl. So they came to the Netherlands, they were very happy, of course, that finally outside of their home country they had a hit. And they were very proud, and we were proud too, because we were a small company, so we so we came instant friends because of the success of Sunny Girl. Mm. Very interesting. And so then <laughs> that's how it starts. Really? That's how you yes. get a relation, of course. Yes. yes. Okay. And then when they. Uh, but I have maybe I can tell something else. <laughs> we we did a few more records which were also more or less successful, but then the headshots. Uh, were over the top and so they did everything they could to stay alive for a certain time and then they decided to record a record in the Netherlands in the Dutch language. Yes. And, uh, and Your brother, brother did. Your brother my did. brother Paul, he, he was a student in Amsterdam and he was a uh, friend with this guy from Sweden, Stefan Schroeder. So he translated the song and it became in Dutch on this man who was called. So the head stars recorded in Dutch in 1969. Mm -hmm. um, um, well, that's interesting because that's the start. And I guess Benny Anderson and Bjorn remembered you when they came up with two ladies called Agnet and yeah. Frida. And, this, uh, and they were in the Melody Festival with Ring Ring. Yeah, they, they called me, must be, uh, I think it was in 73, early 73, I think. Uh, say, uh, we had contact again, as I, as I said, we have now two girlfriends, Magneta and Frida, and uh, we have 
We have recorded a new a new record called you know it's a Ring Ring. I said, are you maybe you are interested in releasing that record in the Netherlands? And uh, so they sent me a copy of it. I, I, I did. And uh, there was a there was a hit record at that time in Holland called Sole Sole by middle of the group, middle of the well, world. And I said, I had uh, maybe Ring Ring. I said could be a good follow-up to Sole Sole. So. I release it, and uh, uh, so we met again in Amsterdam in a Chinese restaurant, as they convinced me to stay to stay one more day and and see their TV performance in the, in a program on the Fara television, and then they perform in that program they perform Ring Ring, and I was excited. They were really incredible how good they performed on television. So I had this idea more than before that this is not. Just another group, they are really very, very good. And, and oh, funny, what funny was you told me you went to the Chinese restaurant with them. Yes, but the bar Bali, the last time. Oh, yeah. when we would have come with them to the Chinese restaurant. They were completely unknown, they could just walk in the street and nobody would recognize them, of course. Yeah, they're very modest. They still are, very nice people. But then. A year later, they did Waterloo, but... Before Waterloo, one more thing. So Ring Ring also was the only in all, it was a top ten record. So they, so they had a very special link with both the Hatchards and St. Bjorn and Benny and Frida. Mm -hmm. they, but they didn't have it in England, not in America, not in Germany, yeah. only in all of Ring Ring. I'm very proud of that, Harry. You, you stood at the cradle. Yes, 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 yes. You can be proud of that. Um, but uh, you told me also something else. Then it was 1974, and again about one, well, then, then the name changed. But somebody else came first to you uh, to see if water would be something. Yes, so maybe what I can tell you. At the end of 1973, when Ring Ring was very popular in Holland, I, I got a call from this man, Stick Anderson, and he told me that with Ring Ring, we didn't achieve it, but now we have achieved it, we're going to do the Eurovision Song Contest. And he said, uh, are, you, are, you, are you interested in releasing this song? And I said, I haven't heard it, so send me a tape or send me a test pressing or whatever. And he said, no, 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 Holland is so important for us, do you mind if I come to you to your place and, and play the record for you myself? So of course I said yes and he flew all the way from Stockholm to Amsterdam, came to my house and he was very, very nervous and he, so he played to me a, this new song called Waterloo. So I was I feel very proud. I was the first one in outside of Sweden maybe, at least the first one in Holland, who heard Waterloo. I was I, I was immediately excited. I thought this is a, this is a great record. This, I would like to release it on. So he made a deal, and a very cheap deal, as you say. And uh, so I released it. But at least I wanted to release it. And then when he got back and stopped all, he called me again, and he said, "We have a problem. To most countries, I have sent a test pressing, but I sent one to Japan." And I got I got a reaction from Japan. They like the record, but they have one problem. They cannot pronounce the name of the group. Björn and Benny and Frida. So we have decided to change our name. So it's so we have decided now from now on for the with the start of Waterloo we will we will call ourselves Abba instead of Björn and Benny and Frida. And to me that was not good. I hope you understand that maybe. Maybe after so many years you say he's talking story, but I said we have a hit with Ring Ring, a top ten record, and now we have to release the follow up under another name. This is not good for him. So I said, okay, you just if you want to just release Waterloo under the name Pure Penny Other Freedom. As it actually happened, you can see it on the internet. Holland is the only country in the world where Waterloo was not released as Abba but as Pure Benny Other Freedom. So, very, very interesting, at least, yeah. Sticking out a lot of uh, trust in you. <laughs> yeah, that was, that's interesting because it was very important yeah. to Abba. Yeah. Um, and also maybe you can say, 
the first country that our visitors after winning Waterloo, they went immediately to Holland. See, and this guy Eddie Becker from the NCFA television, he was he was also friends with Björn Benny and I think he said, okay, if, if you will be last of the song festival, the first thing you do after Brighton, you come to Holland. So immediately after winning Waterloo, with Waterloo, they, came, they did television in Holland. Yeah, they, get, they got the red carpet uh, in Holland. Yeah. That's true, actually. I, I heard the story from Eddie Becker, he said. Uh, and then, about one, and I rushed to Stick and Anderson and I said, uh, is the deal still on? And Stick and said, yes, we promise. So I give you my hand, so they are coming. And they came again. And that's my memory. We had a very famous... Uh, uh, show called One of the Eight and uh, it was with me and uh, you you had something uh, planned. Can you tell me about that? Yes, uh, of course after a certain time uh, Abba came regularly to Holland to do television, especially NCRV television and top up, they were top up with SOS and, uh, but it became harder and harder to get them over because Agneta didn't want to fly again. Every time I had to be really do my very very best to convince him, okay, please come to Holland. Because uh, we, had, we had an idea we could sell uh, many more records, especially albums, and uh, of course, singers like Waterloo and SOS and Fernando, you call them, they were huge bestsellers, but uh, selling a single is one thing, selling albums is much more important. And, uh, and uh, I called uh, we went there to that album Arrival in 1976. Stick Wong, Stick Ellison wanted me to do my very best to sell albums. And I said to him, if he want if he want, if he want to sell albums, they have to come to a major TV show in Holland. And I want, I got Wies Bauman, in van of the acht, interested. They wanted to have the album as double the film. But at the first time when I um, tried to sell uh, Miss Barman to Abba, as I said, we're not going to fly, we're not going to do it. But then Benny said to me, maybe maybe we can do a, a, a trick. If we, have, we are invited by, by Poland to go to Warsaw and have a huge party there. And if you if you come to Stockholm and fly with us to uh, Warsaw, I will do my best for you to, to convince the other members of the group to to say okay one more time yes and that's what I did so in Russia I got a yes signal from from the group so they came on the 19th of November 1976 they came they came to Holland and they did Miss Barman and so far until Miss Barman we had sold in, the, in Holland uh, of all the albums together not more than say 50,000 albums but then after Miss Barman we had so much trust in uh, in in the possibility of selling album, we pressed just because we believed in it, 100,000 albums. Just, just try to see 100,000 albums here in this room, and just by had that feeling, now it has to happen. And we did, and we sold them after me. Brothers, in one minute, one minute, we sold all sorts of 100,000 albums. Yeah. That was the album arrival. So I feel very proud that we could play this role. Yeah, well, you can. <laughs> you make me jealous with your stories. But don't forget. So, if you read books about Abba, uh, read articles, but you always have the feeling that everything was, especially the English book, it looks like Abba was only destined for England. But the fact was that that's really my uh, opinion. Holland was the first country outside of Sweden that uh, where Abba became popular, and we shouldn't forget that in the history of pop music. That's true. So I'm going to interview more. <laughs> I can tell a million other stories, but... Okay, okay. Uh, what is your fondest memory? Picking up on Yenta? <laughs> I was so jealous okay. that you told okay. me that. Okay. I, maybe I can tell because he said it. Yes, Agneta was afraid of flying, as, uh, as you all know, probably. And so when Abba gave the first real concert in Holland, the Jaap Edel in Amsterdam, and the three members of ABBA, us, not Agneta, they took the plane from Stockholm to answer, but not Agneta, Agneta took a ship and the train. 
and then I had to pick up Magneta at Amsterdam Central Station without any makeup, without just incognito. They came there and I was there with my car to pick up Magneta. That was 1977. I think I must have trusted you really. <laughs> <laughs> when you do that, for joke, you don't have, but after all, after many years yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, of course it's, it's a joke. It's a joke. Yeah. It gives you also idea of how yeah, yeah. Imagine, uh, nowadays it's not that possible anymore to get so close to. Uh, yeah. But um, But for maybe, what was your most impressive thing? Uh, uh, as you may know, creative people are not always uh, sure of themselves, always hesitant, is it good or is it not good? I can tell uh, a few stories also about ABBA, but one of the things was in 1976, uh, they didn't have a new record for, us for a long time, they were afraid to release another single. So what they did, they had a few contractual obligations, Jan was telling about it, uh, about the album in Sweden by uh, Agneta, but Frida also recorded an album in Swedish. At the, at the, the both albums were released at the same time. And one of the tracks on this Frida album was uh, Fernando, sung in Sweden. And the stick sent me two albums and I played them at home. And I was really struck by Fernando. I, I had the idea, this is what are you talking about? This should be the next single by Abba. So I called Stockholm and said, what is the problem? You you don't know how what, what to release next. The record Fernando really as the next other thing. And I said to him, okay, if you say that, we will do it. And uh, it was yes, fascinating that a few weeks later they had recorded it. I re I released it on the Polygon record and within a few months it became named number one all over the world. You know, that, that doesn't happen every day when you work in record business. We are grateful okay. for what that. Was, what, was your, what was your great moment? Maybe it was Fernando for me. Well, <laughs> I didn't know that story. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can really love the story. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, what was the last project with Abba for you? Well, in, in 1977, I got another job at Polygon. But of course, we still had Abba, and I was behind the scenes, I was always in. Always involved, always listen to everything. We, I had contact with my uh, with my colleagues at Poly, and I remember one thing which uh, there's a few things I would like to say. Immediately when I heard I have a dream, I thought this is going to be a huge, huge hit, and it took I think uh, over half a year before it was released as a single. I'm very surprised by that. And uh, uh, yeah, and there's one thing I still don't know. Why was uh, well, I was uh, lay, lay, lay all your love on me. That was never the reason to sing I still don't understand that. I think that was one of the best records I ever made. Yes, because you were not in charge anymore. <laughs> no, but, uh, yeah. but I'm fairly surprised. Stickers should have kept on calling you. <laughs> yeah. What is your, well, you had a good relation with Stick with Yes, yes. I, think, I think if you compare a Stick to other managers in the pop music, maybe because he, he was Swedish, maybe because he, he was a teacher before, he was in the music, but he was a very friendly, positive, constructive man. If you, if you talk, of course, I was involved with Polydor with all kinds of managers from England, from America. They were always trying, they were always trying to do you something which you wouldn't want to do. But Stick was encouraging. He was, oh, if you came up with a suggestion, he always said, okay, do it. If he said, can you release more to move? Yes, you know, said, okay, if, if you think that's the best thing to do for your market, do it. And he said, so I think Stink was, uh, he understood the music with, and he was very constructive. And I think the success of Abba has, has a lot to do with the attitude of Stick Emerson. I agree, I agree. Because from the start on, he uh, uh, went Waterloo with, uh, with uh, the Eurovision Song Contest, Stikan already plugged the, the, the signal but to, you see? not only to Holland but to several countries and uh, because he knew, he, I think he knew he had gold in his hands. But could you see when they won the contest with Waterloo, he was the only one who could go and 
take the, the middle. Mm -hmm. But he was, you can see how embarrassed he was because Benny and Björn were not there at that moment. Mm -hmm. he, he didn't feel he didn't feel embarrassed because it was not his success. Björn and Benny are lead as composers of the solo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We lost them also too yeah. early. Yeah. A very, very important man in the history of art. Yes, I, I agree. I agree. Uh, I don't know how much time we have. If you maybe if you, have, knows. If, you, if you have any questions, just <laughs> maybe uh, maybe you have questions. I can try to answer them. Yeah. Does somebody have a question, Philip? Yes, I can. No, I wasn't. My brother was. But my brother was always proud that he was there and I was not there. To compliment, to compliment you on your story about the Bible in the Netherlands, I ask you that because I think, according to me, that, that Eddie Becker show in the summer of 75 was the very first big television with five or six songs yeah, I know, that I know. Abba was I know, able I, to do I was, outside of the, outside of Sweden. I was responsible for that. Okay. I organized those things. Oh, great. So, so we were in the we were in the hotel in the Lake of Wurzel. Yeah. Just we stayed there and uh, uh, oh, maybe I, 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 was, I was involved as I told you with uh, Hepsa and my favorite Hepsa song was not Sunny Girl but was a song called uh, there's a flower in my garden. I really yeah. like that very much. Yeah. Yeah. And every time when Benny was, Benny and, and me, when we met, and there was a piano, he always, for many years, he always went to the piano and said, I'm going to play your favorite song. And then he played. And, and, and do, you know, do you know that the recording of that TV special disappeared for many, many years, and Eddie Baker yes, was, able, was able to find an old video cassette. And it, and it has been now, I think, uh, shown on TV in Holland on the on the on the on the yes yes on the on the. On the I, I, no, I, I was in the studio. I was yeah. in the TV studio. Oh yeah. And also, also I was there, as I told you, when Abba went to to Russia to Poland, said we call yeah. it TV. I was there as that well. was that was one year later. Yeah. It was in 1976, in the summer of 76. Yeah. I, and, and, and if Eddie, you, Eddie Baker was June 1975. Yeah, 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 I think so. Yeah, yeah. great. Yeah, and then, this, this maybe is an interesting thing because of that TV show. Uh, I asked permission uh, uh, from Abba to release an album, The Best of Abba, and because of that TV show, and and and, and later, so we got permission for Holland to release that album, and, and later when Fernando became an asset, we, had, we were permitted to include Fernando on that album. And, and, I think, I and, think that's, that's, and that record and also the same sleeve was later released all over the world. And I think you were the first country in Europe to release that best of in 1975. Yes, and and because of the TV show by yeah, uh, Eddie Becker. Yes, yes, you're right. Any more questions? Yes, there's some more questions? No questions. No questions. Then, then I'm going to ask you something. Then I'm going to ask you. Of course, we got after 40, 40 years, they're back. I will be around if you have any questions. And they want to ask me in private, just come to me. Yes, you can do that after, after this. Yes. But then Voyage came. What did you think of that? I think the... It was really a surprise that they came up with for you, especially this first two songs, uh, and especially I almost have faith in you. I think it was a, a terrific uh, song. And, uh, but, I have, but so far I haven't been to London yet, but I will be at the end of May. I will go to London and see it for the first time. So you I, should come to the two, two years anniversary. Yeah, yeah. Talk to Elga. <laughs> I think you will be astonished. Yeah. My, uh, my, my cousin Eva, the Ulysses, she went already with her family and they were so enthusiastic about it that they 
will be back at the end of May and they said, okay, next time we go there, you will be our special guest. Mm -hmm. So I will go there probably on the 27th of May. That's quite good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want to thank you for everything. I want to thank you for bringing Abba to uh, the Netherlands. And then for bringing the joy that I could see them live on the television with uh, one of the eight with me. And, um, you can see and Eddie Becker, I, I saw as well. And my niece went there. Well, can you can imagine that? And then she said, I went to Eddie Becker. But I'm the fan. <laughs> Incredible. I will be back with you and we will have more stories but, with but, you but later. But because of this program by Misha and Jody, we saw those hundred thousand albums in, in one minute, but within a few months we sold uh, uh, of both Arrival and that album, The Best of Abba, including Fernando, we sold within a few months one million five hundred thousand albums. Whoa. In yeah, you know, it was that album. They were so that album, the best of Abba, was so popular that you could buy it at Albert Heijn. And, <laughs> yeah. Really? Yes. Yeah. And it was at Abba Heijn, Albert Heijn. If you sell it, then Abba was so popular. So Very clever of them. So we made a deal with <laughs> Albert Heijn that they could sell it. But you had a good nose for songs. <laughs> well, I made a lot of mistakes, but sometimes you're right. Yes, yes. Sometimes you have to uh, to say, yes, we go ahead. For the same, you could have said, oh, Walter, no, not good at songs. <laughs> As I thank told you, I can tell you some more stories. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, 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 will, I, will, I will personally visit you. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. I thank you for everything you have done for Abba. We have a little gift for you. Thank you for the Easter. Yes. <laughs>